it's Claudia welcome back to my channel today we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart and that is my office otherwise known as my studio I have not named her yet and I think that's a shame but it there hasn't been a name yet that stuck with me her name is affectionately the studio why did I call it the studio I'll share more on that in a little bit Y'all, my studio was a gift that I gave to myself. After uh, I was laid off during the pandemic, I was home and I wanted somewhere where I could have as my own little retreat. And I planned on working for myself. I own my own business. I am a registered dietitian. I work one-on-one -on -one with patients and I help them to change their lifestyle when it comes to diabetes, high blood pressure, um, you name it, anything nutritional related, I work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So I was looking for a place where I could have my own practice, where I could also do my flower thing that I do. <laughs> I wanted it not just to serve my patients, but serve me and all the things that I love, gardening, nutrition, as well as books and have a place where I can come, rest, retreat, recharge, and go again. I didn't want it to be my house. I wanted it to be a space that was uniquely mine. I'm gonna show you some old footage and I want you to bear with me because this footage was shot before I started YouTube. Um, and you can't go back and reshoot the building of the, of the studio, obviously. Please bear with me because some of the video was shot for Instagram, which is a different orientation. I've made it so that it would fit the screen on YouTube. So you may see a little um, difference in the video and the video quality, but I promise you, if you stick with it to the end, you will get the full picture of what my long-term goal is for my studio. I'm gonna take you through how much it cost, why I chose the location that I did, how I currently use it, my long-term goals for using it, what else do I plan to do to it, um, if anything, and then my plans for the gardens surrounding it. So let's go inside and take a look. We're gonna start from the beginning and come to today, and then I'm gonna take you inside, give you a tour, and then tell you what my future plans for my studio is. Come on in, come. Out of the pandemic came my studio. When I was laid off, I decided to start my own business doing nutrition consultation online. And I wanted to create a space to do that. I also wanted to create a space that would allow me to have a space to work on my garden content, to shoot videos of me prepping the food from the garden, showing nutritious recipes, and also where I can arrange flowers and do all the things pertaining to my love of garden without it being in my house. We selected the only flat area in the yard that was in close proximity to the house, as well as the garden, which is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to give patients if they were to come to the garden, the opportunity to go from the studio to the garden relatively easily. It also needed to be a location that had a pretty decent view and could accommodate the size of the studio, which is 16 feet by 24 feet. Uh, it is a decent size because it is going to house a kitchen as well as an office area, an area for my books, and then a sitting area as well. So it needed to be fairly large. This is when we first started putting in the floor joists. And uh, as you can see, it is fairly large. Um, I will say that building during the pandemic was a very costly uh, undertaking because I had to pay someone to clear the land, get rid of the trees that was there. Fortunately, my neighbor was able to work with us and um, he did it relatively inexpensively. We also knew someone who is a builder and he did it on the weekends and in the evenings when he got done with his regular job. I told him what I wanted and he was able to conceptualize it. I wanted it to match the pitch of the roof for our house. 
I also wanted it to be the color of our house. I wanted loads of windows because I'm somewhat claustrophobic. And I wanted it to have windows on every side for lots of lights because I knew I was going to have a lot of plants in the studio and needed to accommodate that. I also needed to bear in mind water on the floor. So we chose a flooring that would be able to tolerate water and that did not need to be uh, shampooed all the time like carpet would. Another thing that we did was we used as cost-effective measures as possible when obtaining materials, because like I said, we built during the pandemic. And if anybody remembers, materials were hard to come by and the prices were greatly inflated. So. I went looking on Facebook Marketplace. I drove to Alabama to go buy windows that were returned to a factory. They were custom windows that were returned to a factory. They were delivered to a site. The person refused them and then they sold them to me for a fraction of the price. So I have custom windows that are very well built and I paid hardly anything for them. So doing things like that, someone gave me French doors and you know, those are what's in the studio. So saving where I could, I bought the wall oven from uh, Habitat for Humanity, as well as the uh, cooktop from Habitat for Humanity. I have the sink, I have faucets and stuff. So I have all the materials that I need except the cabinets and the countertops thus far. So once we were building, I made a few changes. I had a secondary door but I realized I didn't leave myself any space to put bookshelves and or to put a TV. So I took the secondary door out. In this frame, we're looking at the fact that the roof rafters are on and most of the framing is done. Y'all, I remember coming home from uh, the grocery store and seeing the rafters put up and I literally screamed out loud. I was so, so excited because it just meant that I was having the vision that I was given for what my business should be, for what my social media presence should be coming to life. Um, I felt very clearly that this was what I was supposed to do with my life because it combined all my loves and it combined the natural talents and gifts I feel like I was given. So hence, there it was. Um, in this clip, the doors have been added and the windows added and he had started wrapping it in the, the vapor barrier outside prior to putting on siding and putting on the roof. Um, if you notice, the windows are very tall and they're triple hung on each side. There's a smaller window over where the sink is going to be, and then the French door is in the front, and then two additional windows in the front to let in all the light. Once the first set of windows were put in, the two on the sides and the one in the back, I realized that it didn't have enough light. And I know how could that not be, but it was very dark in the front. I also did not want to be home alone working because at that time my husband had not been injured yet. And I was home alone working and couldn't see who was coming down the driveway. So we added these two windows. Our friends came by and took a tour of the studio and took a picture of me in the studio while it was under construction. The floor had not been added yet, baseboards had not been added, heating and cooling hadn't been added yet or anything of the sort. Now we had to put a pause on construction after my husband was injured because we diverted all of our extra resources into making our home accessible for him. And as a result, the studio is still not finished, but it is very usable. I have heating, I have cooling, I have flooring, my fridge is out here. And the only thing that's really missing are cupboards and countertops and to have the installation of the wall oven and the cooktop. So one of the reasons I chose the location that I did for the studio was because I wanted it to sit in the midst of the gardens and be looked at from different uh, areas. I wanted it to be surrounded by flowers and have a very cottage garden since it is a cottage-esque building. I wanted it to uh, be like the heart, the hub of our property. And I think I accomplished that. 
you will see different shots of the studio from different areas in the yard and it literally looks like the gardens grew up around it which is exactly what I wanted. I am by no means done. I'm going to show you a couple pictures that were inspiration pictures for the studio and then you will understand what I'm doing and the point I want to get to. It is to me going to look like an English cottage buried under flowers and all these vining roses and things and clematises and things of that sort by the time I am done. So I'm building layers. The garden around the studio is currently two years old and each year I'm adding to it and adding to it until it finally has the look that I'm looking for. So let's start with the porch. Um, we have our wonderful wind chimes that one of my generous followers donated to me or gifted me for the garden. And I tell you, it has been a sense of comfort and enjoyment for us having it on the porch. I have a thermostat that tells us how cold it is outside and then various decor. This is all my stuff that I use when I'm working in the garden. Um, most of this will move to the greenhouse once it gets set up. Oops, I'll let the cat out the bag. I'm getting a greenhouse. That's probably one of the next videos coming. But in any event, those things will move to the greenhouse. So overlook them. My shoe storage, my watering can, our table. I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace for a hundred bucks. It is wrought iron, solid, beveled glass. My plan is to redo the chairs in time for spring to match these two chairs and this rug. The reason why those chairs are like this is because our big dog likes to roll in the creek and then come and try to sit on them. And if I have them like that, then he doesn't. Um, all right, let's go on inside. So when you walk in, it's looking mighty crowded at the moment because it's serving as my temporary greenhouse. In the winter months, I bring in all my citrus fruits as well as anything that I'm overwintering into my studio so that they will benefit from the heat. Typically, it is set at 69 at night and then during the day, somewhere between 70 and 74, depending on how cold it is outside. The reason I set it that warm is underneath the studio is not insulated yet. And as a result, there are days when it's colder on the floors and in the building than it would be if I had um, it insulated. So let's start over here. Since this is indeed my business space, I have a fax machine and an office telephone number and, of course, internet access and all of that. I have files and cards and different things stored here. Of course, you're going to see loads of houseplants and um, internet access. We have um, fiber optic and then I just piggyback off the Wi-Fi and use that here. I have loads of books. We love to read in our family. And so these are my professional books. These are other ones. These two rows are professional, so they're all nutrition. These are on flowers. This is on um, spiritual things. If by now you haven't noticed, I am a Christian. So I love to journal. I have journals and devotionals. That's another thing I like to read. So I have several of those. And then these are all veggie. These are all vegetable books up there. The next area you're going to get to is my little side table. This side table has just decor and old magazines that I use for inspiration and that I just like to read in my downtime. My camera for shooting content. Uh, smaller than normal size sofa because I didn't want it to take up plenty of space in here. Um, some of the vessels that I use for floral arrangements, my different baskets that I use to gather food from the garden. I do have a mini split, which is how I heat and cool the studio. Uh, eventually, those areas will be removed. What happened was because it was initially going to be lower, but when the gentleman came to install it, he moved it up. And so those holes were the previous holes and... Um, they just need to be cut level 
puttied, uh, sanded, and then painted. And then you would never know that they were there. So I have a refrigerator full size and I have what I call my curiosity cabinet. There's a show on Magnolia Network where this couple makes bespoke kitchens custom to the nth degree. And they always have a curiosity cabinet that houses all the tchotchkes of the wife and um, or the spouse. And I wanted one of those because one of my goals is to do some photo shoots with some of the food that I prepare for my blog, which are on the healthier side as a dietitian, right? This studio is um, a work in progress. It's not quite finished. We do have plumbing over here for gas. So it will have that gas cooktop in the center of an island here in the middle of the building. That is why there are two pendants here. Those pendants will sit over the island, which will be four feet deep by eight feet wide. That island will allow me to cook and demonstrate to patients who come in um, how to eat healthier. Uh, it doesn't have to be patients who come in, but also individuals online, virtual, whatever, who want a one-on-one -on -one consult on how to eat healthier, how to make changes to their diets. You know, it's one thing to be diagnosed with diabetes or renal failure or whatever it is. And then now all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't know how to move forward. Or you have a child who has multiple food allergies. How do I cook and still feed the rest of the family? That kind of so forth. So anyway, it is also being used currently as a storage because I don't have a greenhouse although there is one in the works. So once that's done, some of this stuff will move out of here, like my spray canister, uh, some of my tools and so forth and so on. But as you can see, I have my diplomas hung. I have my record player. I love to listen to Christmas music all year long. And I have different jazz albums and things. Over here, I have a TV where I tend to watch YouTube videos while I'm working, unless I'm with a patient, of course. Store my boots there so I don't make a mess. And then more plants. Of course, I'm using a dining table as a desk because I found that a desk was not sufficient space. And then I have two filing cabinets underneath. I normally wear house shoes in my office to keep my feet warm. My desk is overflowing at the moment because I was doing some content work as well as sorting through seeds. So you get to see all in the mix at the moment. So the plan is to have a sink under the window and a row of cabinets that comes in an L this way. There is a wall oven that will go where that orange cord is coming out the wall right here, and above it, more cupboards. So this room will have much cupboards in order for me to store garden stuff as well as kitchen stuff. I have extra pots and pans and utensils and things like that in my home for my studio already. Literally all that's missing from the studio are the cupboards and the sink. No, I have the sink. All that's missing from the studio is the cupboards and the countertops. And once I can afford those, I'll put those in and then um, begin to use the space as I fully envisioned. So it will have counter space where I can arrange flowers, where I can... Um, do different things that makes my heart happy. I can do all my food preservation from my garden. And my garden, vegetable garden, is right outside the windows. See? Excuse all the filth on the windows. They need to be cleaned. So this is my space. I would love to have built-in bookshelves all along this wall and perhaps this whole wall and then have the kitchen be this section, but I'm not 100% sure. I think I'll decide once I see the cost of cabinets 
and countertops and we'll go from there. I even have my seed starting station set up in here. I'm going to start some seeds in here. I have ranunculuses up here going. Um, but I'm going to move them to the greenhouse once we get them. The greenhouse should ship this week. Once it does, sometime in the first part of the new year, I will have it up and running and then be doing seed starting out there. I'm going to keep my citruses in here since they're used to things in here. But next year, that's where they'll overwinter because I won't have cabinet. I will have cabinets and counter stops and whatever and will not have space for them in here. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and for following along as I created a dream of mine. Until next time, happy gardening. If you have enjoyed today's content, please consider subscribing. Mm -hmm.